Hello and welcome back to Johnny Benny Campus News, your go-to channel for updates on campus life and events. I'm Ben Bugby. And I'm Daisha Gray. Let's get into this week's top stories. Tomorrow night and April 26 at 6.30 p.m., Clemens Library will transform into a hub of sustainability with the Earth-themed game night. Hosted by CSB, SJU Libraries and Archives, the event promises a lineup of eco-conscious fun. Featuring classic li classics like Apples to Apples and collaborative crossword puzzles. Don't miss out on this opportunity to play, learn, and embrace our planet's importance. Be sure to mark your calendars and join in this green game action. This Friday, April 26, at 4.15 p.m., the Outdoor Leadership Center at SJU is hosting a cosmic adventure with the PRP bike ride to Jupiter Moon. Join forces with the Peer Resource Program and Sustainability Office for a journey through Earth Week, culminating in a sweet reward of free ice cream. Remember, registration is a must for equipment and those delicious treats. Don't miss out on this out-of-this-world experience. Calling all green thumbs, this Saturday, April 27th from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., join St. John's Outdoor University for a tree planting extravaganza in the Abbey Arboretum with over 1,500 seedings waiting to take root. It's your chance to make a tangible difference in our Arboretum. Whether you're a seasoned planter or just an eager person to lend a hand, come hungry because lunch is on the house. Sign up now on the Outdoor Use website. This Saturday, April 27th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., the Warner Palestra at SJU hosts the Fruit at the Finish Triathlon, brought to you by St. John's Outdoor University and the Outdoor Leadership Center. Whether you're up for the full challenge or just half, there's a spot for everyone. Plus, lend a hand as a volunteer and score yourself a free shirt and some tasty treats. Get ready to swim, bike, and run your way to victory. This Saturday, April 27th from 7 to 9 p.m., head over to O'Connell's at CSB for Crazy Karaoke, hosted by the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. Sing your hearts out while enjoying delicious food, and don't miss the chance to snag some awesome gifts. Get ready to hit the stage and let your talent shine. I tell you, Deja, we have got a lot of wonderful sustainability actions going on on campus this week, and what a great way to celebrate Earth Week, huh? Yeah, and it's very beautiful outside, nice warm weather mm. to get all of the events done. Absolutely. Well, I look forward to taking part in all of those activities and maybe basking outside to get a little bit of a, a tan going on. I love that for you. <laughs> Thank you. Shifting gears, let's now head over to our sports reporters, Chloe and Olivia, who will bring you the latest highlights in the world of Johnny Benny Sports this week. Thanks, Ben. I'm Chloe Moore. And I'm Olivia Smith. And welcome back to the Johnny Benny Sports Roundup, your source for updates on Johnny and Benny Sports. Chloe will start this week's episode off by telling you about Benny Track and Field's successful outing at the U of M yesterday. Benny Outdoor Track and Field team had an impressive performance at the Gary Wilson Invitational at the University of Minnesota on Wednesday, April 24th. Senior Ellie Selesker and first year Sabria Farquharson both secured a pair of top eight finishes. Selesker had a personal best in the triple jump, finishing 5th at 10.96 meters, and then placed 7th in the long jump at 5.26 meters. Farquharson finished 6th in the long jump and 8th in the triple jump. CSB also found success on the track with sophomore Lauren Berg finishing 7th in the 400 meter hurdles and sophomore Mary Keeney clocked an 1858.64 in the 5000 meter run. The Bennies head to St. Paul this Saturday to compete at the McAllister Ryder Bolstroff Invitational. Now, Olivia will fill you in on softball's win over Carleton last night. CSB softball was able to pick up another win on the road last night over Carleton. The win contributed to the Bennies' six-game winning streak, moving them to 21 and 13 overall and 14 and 2 in the MIAC. CSB walked away with six doubles and two home runs last night. Olivia Takis hit a .571 with four hits and seven at the bat with two doubles and her 12th home run and five RBIs. Sophomore Kat Smetna and Bryn Ruberg both had two hits that contributing to the, their RBIs. Olivia Wallace held Carlton to a run on five hits and recorded two strikeouts. St. Ben still stands first in the conference standings. 
CSB will now take on St. Scholastica on the road this Saturday, April 27th at 2 p.m. CSB Lax was able to take home their seventh win of the season last night in a tough back and forth game in St. Joseph. First year Lizzie Shruby had a record breaking performance. She set two program records with 12 points and 11 assists in a game. She also had one goal. The Benny's strong defense in the second half was crucial in securing the win. Reigning MLC Defensive Player of the Week, Chloe Lewis, had 10 saves as she moved to 7-2-0 on the season. CSB Lacrosse returns to the field after a long road trip this Saturday, April 27th, to Lake Forest College in Illinois. St. Ben's Golf played in Rumble at the Ridge, a tournament hosted by Bethel, last Sunday, April 21st. Senior Emily Renner and sophomore Maggie Roth both captured wins in the match play portion. CSB captured the team title in the stroke play on Saturday by carding a round of 31 over par 319 and placing four players in the top 10. First year Taylor Nodler and sophomore Donnell Decker also competed in the match play. Nodler recorded a 5-4 win over Ella Wright of St. Olaf, but Decker lost 8-1 to Jasmine Sybil of Bethel. Catch Benny Golf this weekend at the Carlton St. Olaf Spring Invite this Saturday, April 27th and Sunday the 28th. Now, on to Johnny Sports this week, starting off with Johnny Golf. 12th ranked Johnny Golf won the two-day Bobby Craig Invitational last Sunday at La Sewer Country Club. The Johnnies shot 17 over par to win the 14-team tournament, scoring 581. The host, Gustavus, finished fourth with a final score of 602. All five Johnnies finished in the tournament top 14 out of 84 golfers. Seniors Mark, Mark Longhenry, Sam Berger, and Nate Loxercamp tied for third with a total of 145 over two days, which is four over par. The other two Johnnies, Blake Schuler and Andrew Bamer, tied for 14th, both shooting seven over par at 148. Schuler had four birdies on Sunday. The Johnnies will host their annual spring invitational this weekend, April 27th and 28th at the Wapakata Golf Course in Sauk Rapids on Saturday in the Monticello Country Club on Sunday. On both days, the first tee times are at 10 a.m. Now, Chloe will tell you about Johnny Baseball's doubleheader split in Moorhead. Johnny Baseball had to settle for another doubleheader split on Tuesday against the Cobbers of Concordia Moorhead. The Johnnies scored 20 runs across the two games, winning game one 14 to seven, but dropping game two nine to six. SJU is now 20 and 11 overall and nine and five in the MIAC. With the game tied at 1-1 to after the first couple innings in Game 1, the Johnny offense really came to life in the top of the third inning, scoring five runs to take the lead 6-1. to Junior Blake Melgren scored on an RBI double from sophomore shortstop Reed Marquette. Marquette had a huge Game 1, going 3-3 three for three at the plate, tallying two RBIs and scoring three runs himself. After the Cobbers scored four runs in the bottom of the fifth to cut the Johnny lead to one, the Johnnies responded with another five runs in the top of the sixth. Concordia Moorhead scored two runs in the bottom of that inning. The score was 11-7, headed into the seventh. SJU scored another three in the top of the seventh and secured the win after a scoreless eighth inning. Griffin Larson secured his fifth win of the year on the mound. He is still undefeated at 5-0. In game two, senior Owen Dock gave the Johnnies a quick 1-0 lead with a solo homer. It was Dock's fifth homer of the year and the 16th of his career but the Cobbers scored two in the bottom of the first to take their first lead of the game. Senior DH Andrew Malky tied the game with his first ever collegiate homer in the top of the second. Marquardt's red hot day continued as he began with a third with his third double of the day, but he didn't score. The Johnnies scored a pair of runs in the top of the fourth and one more in the top of the fifth. SJU even added another in the top of the seventh to cut the Cobbers lead to two, but that would be the last score of the game for the Johnnies. Concordia Moorhead added another run in the bottom of the eighth, and the game ended 9-6 after a scoreless ninth inning. Wyatt Rudolph took the loss on the mound to fall to 0-2. The Johnnies play in a doubleheader at home on Saturday against St. Scholastica. Game 1 starts at 1 p.m. Next, Olivia will update you on SJU track and field. SJU Track and Field won five events at the Division I Minnesota Gary Wilson Invitational on Wednesday, April 24th. Senior Kevin Arthur recorded a personal best while winning the 100-meter dash prelims with a time of 10.38 seconds. He did not compete in the final. However, he won the 200-meter dash with a time of 21.71 seconds. Junior Jackson McDowell won the high jump with a height of 2.01 meters. Sophomore Mitchell Dagan took on the first in the javelin with a throw of 53.32 meters. Carter McEckerin came right behind in third with a distance of 49.24 meters. 
The Johnnies recorded the first three times in the 5,000 meters. Junior Ethan Leonard led in first with a time of 16.07 and 49 milliseconds. Junior AJ Skinner was second with a time of 16 and 33 seconds with 61 milliseconds. Freshman Peyton Martinek came in third with a time of 13, 16 minutes, 37 seconds, and 56 milliseconds. SGU travels to compete at the Gustavus Adolphus Drake Alternative on Saturday, April 27th at 10.30 a.m. in St. Peter. Now, Chloe will rack up this week's sports roundup with SGU Tennis, who won, the, who won last weekend. Johnny Tennis won their second straight match, 7-2, against Bethel last Saturday in Rogers, Minnesota. SJU swept the Royals 3-0 in doubles and went 3-2 in singles matches. Junior number one doubles partners Cooper Anderson and Ryan Will won 8-7. At number three doubles, freshman Alex Drager and senior Mark Rosen won 7-5. It was a much more comfortable 8-3 victory for senior Ian Odland and freshman Sam Walden at number two doubles. Adlin also won his singles match in straight sets 6-2 and then 6-1. The other two singles wins were from Walden and senior Daniel Perez. The Johnny's next match is a non-conference bout in Roseville against Northwestern tonight. That will wrap up this week's Johnny Benny Sports Roundup. Good luck to all the Bennies and Johnnies competing this week. Thanks as always for watching. Be sure to tune in next week for our final sports roundup of the school year, where Brendan and Tommy will be back to give you one last sports update before they graduate. Now back to you, Ben and Daisha. Thanks as always to Chloe and Olivia for delivering the latest updates on Johnny Benny sports and activities. And with that, we wrap up another week's edition of Johnny Benny Campus News. We appreciate your viewership. Join us again next week for the latest in campus updates, noteworthy news, and upcoming events. Your ongoing support is crucial, so make sure to let your friends know where they can stay up to date with the latest on Johnny Benny Campus News. And be sure to check us out on Instagram at CSBSJU underscore JB Media. As always, I'm Ben Bugby. And I'm Daisha Gray. Have a great weekend. And enjoy the beauty of Earth Week.